Welcome everybody and thanks for watching this online event in which we will tell you what the European Commission has to offer to pupils, students and their teachers with a particular emphasis on language learning. Let's start by introducing my colleague uh, who will tell you more about what Erasmus Plus is all about. First of all, uh, Daphne will tell about uh, Discover EU, amazing program for youth. Afterwards, uh, Guillaume and Oana will step in to tell about Erasmus Plus, what it is uh, in it for teachers and their schools, how this program supports their activities. Myself, I am coordinator of Juvenes Translatores, the contest of translation for youngsters who are 17 year olds. In fact, uh, I would like to thank all teachers who already registered their schools to the contest. But those who are not yet, you are still have this possibility to do so by the 20th of October. And how to do so, you can find the link just below in the description of this online video. Unfortunately, we have quotas for each country, and I know already that we will not be able to accept all schools from the certain countries. Because in fact, these are our translators, professionals who on daily basis translate the EU law, who will mark all these translations. And therefore, we cannot meet interest of all schools who would like to take part in our contents. But what, what I do not like at all, to leave these teachers, enthusiastic, great teachers who already registered to their schools and who care a lot about their students, empty-handed. Therefore, together with my colleagues, we will tell you about different other initiatives related to language learning that you and secondary school students can certainly enjoy. Without any favor ado, I would like to invite my colleague Daphne to share on the amazing project for youth, Discover EU. Over to you, Daphne. Thank you very much, Deidre, for, the, for that great introduction. So I'm Daphne and I work for a project called Discover EU. The first thing for me is to manage to share my screen. Voila. So first, let me talk to you about those young people on the picture. They have three things in common. First thing, they're all 18 years old. Second, they are all Europeans. Third, they're all traveling with Discover EU. This picture was taken two years ago during a meetup in Nijmegen in the Netherlands. But what is Discover EU? Well, Discover EU is an initiative of the European Union that offers free train passes, three free train tickets to young people aged 18, with some exceptions for those, tra for those living in islands, of course, then we, we provide them with a, um, a plane ticket because we want everybody to take part, but it's mainly an initiative by train. There is a lot to learn here for the young people. Um, we see that they really like to share and connect and meet other young Europeans. They discover other culture, the cultures, they discover European history, they learn to manage a budget, become more independent. So there is a lot, uh, really a lot to get there uh, for, for young people. Um, and the good news is that we organize two application rounds each year, one in autumn, one in spring. And the next one is starting next week. But I will tell you more about that uh, in, in a moment. First, I want to, uh, to, to give you a little bit of, of history on this, um, on this wonderful project. So how did it all start? Well, it started with Martin and Vincent that you can see on the left here on the picture. Martin and Vincent decided on in uh, 2014 to travel with Interrail, so via train, across the European Union for a very long trip. Uh, there are two young German guys and uh, they, thought this was such an amazing experience. They said they really felt like they were part of these big European families and they were, they're feeling, they were feeling really welcome wherever they were going. And they thought, wouldn't, be, wouldn't it be a great idea if every young European aged 18 for their, I mean, for their 18th birthday, if they would receive a free interrail pass. 
and they thought, how can make this dream come true? So they addressed uh, this to the European Parliament. They went to see an MEP, and this MEP thought, hmm, that, that's quite a great idea, actually. Uh, you are right. Let's try and see uh, what we can do with, with this. And um, he, he helped making that idea come true, and it became a, a preparatory action of the European Parliament. In 2018, the Parliament gave money to the European Commission saying, look, we want young people to travel across Europe, so make it happen. And within a few months, a team within the European Commission, a team that I have the pleasure to be part of, you can see it on uh, our picture on the, on the slide. Um, so we worked hard to, uh, to make it happen. In a few months, we opened the applications on the European Youth Portal. And we, um, we, we just launched this project called Discover You. It was a big success. On the first day, we had 30,000 young people who applied. And um, it continued until uh, the end of uh, 20, uh, 2019. And in total, uh, so in four application round, 70,000 young people apply, uh, got a travel pass. Now it got so successful that Discovery U joined the, Euro, the Erasmus uh, Plus family. So it joined the Erasmus Plus program as of this year. It means that it will continue until 2027. Unfortunately, due to the pandemic last year, it, uh, the Discovery U was frozen. But now we, we are able to start it again. And next week, as I said, we're opening application, the, the applications. And we have 60,000 travel passes to offer. So how can, uh, if, you, if you're 18, if you're a young person, how can you apply? Well, uh, first I want to mention that for this uh, application round in October, there is something a bit special is that we will open to young people who are uh, between 18 until 20 to allow for those who could not apply in 2020. Do you know those who were 18 in 2020 could not apply because uh, no one was traveling. So we really wanted everybody to take part. So that's why we open until 20 years old. And that's why we have so many travel passes this time, uh, 60,000. You also need to have uh, to to have the nationality of one of the member states of the European Union. And once you are selected, if you have the chance to be selected, you travel alone or in a group of maximum five people. You can travel between one day and up to 30 days, and you automatically become a Discover You ambassadors, ambassador, which means that we ask you to um, just to spread the word about Discover You to allow even more people to take part, because thanks to the Erasmus Plus program, we will have more and more travel passes. So it's, it's really great if more people can take part. Now, when and uh, where can you apply? Well, as I said, we have two application rounds per year. The next one is taking place next week between uh, the 12th and until the 26th of October. And it's taking place on the European Youth Portal. You can see the description uh, below this video. And all you have to do, uh, it's quite simple. You just need to provide your first name, last name, date of birth and email, of course, so we can contact you. And you need to answer five quite easy quiz questions uh, on the European Union and a subsidiary question. In January 2022, we will publish the results. And if you are lucky and you are among the winners, you can travel between March 2022 and February 2023. But if you're not 18 yet, or if you, like me, have passed the age limit for a while and you still uh, want to, you're still interested in Discover You because, for example, you're a teacher or your son would like to go on beyond Discover You, there is still something you can do even if you can't apply. You can join the Discover You official Facebook group. That's, uh, you can uh, join the joyful party of 40. 41,000 member and it keeps on growing. I, I think it's going to grow a lot next week when we open, open the applications again. And it's really a community where young people like to meet, uh, to share tips on traveling. Some even promote their regions or their city. They even invite each other uh, and they say, oh, look, uh, I, I live in, in this great place. Just come and visit me. 
um, they organized spontaneous meetup. I remember a young, uh, a young boy called uh, Ryan from Malta. He actually put, uh, he posted in the Facebook group that he was going to be in Budapest on a specific weekend. And it, he had many answers. And in the end, 17 young people from the Facebook group met in Budapest and visited the city together. So that's one of the great stories that happen uh, all the time in the Facebook group. We also organize competitions, uh, contests, uh, green contests, for example, to share your green tips to travel. We uh, the young people there exchange tips on traveling, studying, cooking, and many other things. And here on the slide, you can see Thanos from Greece and Kaspars from Latvia, who are two uh, enthusiastic uh, members of the community. And so if you join, you, you will have the chance to meet them too. So that's about Discover You. I wanted also to, to tell you about a few other uh, opportunities. First of all, still part of Discover You is the learning cycle. So now you know that uh, Discover You is part of Erasmus Plus. It means that uh, the Erasmus Plus national agencies that are located in every uh, member state of the European Union, um, they, uh, they also play a big role in, uh, in Discover You. And one of uh, the things that they do is that they organize meetups and preparatory training for those who will live uh, with, uh, with Discover You. Another thing that you can do um, if you're if you're not in the edge limit or if let's say after Discover You you want to do more, you can always apply for a youth exchange or if you want to volunteer uh, to a project, for example, to help fight climate change or to uh, to work to, to to do something good for biodiversity, for example, or if you want to to work with elderly people as a volunteer, you can always apply for the European Solidarity Corps. Another thing that you can do if you have ideas or things you that you think um, that uh, that could benefit the future of Europe, be it on the digital, on health, on um, economy, on on any topic, really, you can please share your ideas in the con in uh, the website on the conference of the future uh, of Europe. Also, still. The links are uh, in the description below this video. And I also wanted to mention that 2022 is the European Year of Youth. So if you're young, this is your year and there will be a lot of celebrations all across uh, the European Union. Very last slide for me now. Um, you can, as I said, you can joy, join the party in the Facebook group, but you can also um, follow our social media channels. Discover You is very often uh, discussed on social media, on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. These are the European youth um, in uh, social media accounts where we share uh, regularly opportunities and anything related to youth. And in 2022, there will be a big party there uh, for the European Year of Youth. I just want to say one last thing to finish, to remind that the applications for Discover You open on the 12th of October next week. Thank you very much. Thank you, Daphne. I already imagine 60,000 happy people uh, traveling around uh, Europe and uh, put all my jealousy aside. I would like to, to tell you, if you are in the right age group, hurry up and uh, apply for this amazing uh, project. Or if you are younger, bear it in mind, it will come a little bit later. And in all possible cases, please share this information because it's definitely amazing project. We cannot agree more with it. And now about Erasmus Plus. This is undoubtedly one of the most popular project and beloved EU programs. It is a cornerstone of the European Union support for educational, professional, and personal development for people of all ages in education, training, and beyond. It is absolutely amazing that over three decades only, uh, more than 10 million people have participated in this program. And for many of them, it was a uh, something like a life-changing experience. So actually, 
uh, the program that was launched in uh, 2021 and it will go for seven years has uh, a bigger budget, over 26 billion euros in total. That means it aims at many more participants. So uh, there are a lot of things to learn about it. And we are for over to you, Oana, to tell us more about Erasmus Plus program. Thank you, uh, Zidre. And you know, after hearing Daphne also, it feels like wanted to be 18 again, just to go for a Discover You. So hi, hello everyone. Uh, I'm Juana, as you heard, and uh, I'm here with Guillaume. We are uh, very happy to, to um, walk you through the different uh, opportunities that are for you as a teacher and in particular um, a language teacher uh, and your school uh, in the, the new Erasmus Plus program. So if you wish to, to enter into a cooperation project. So before we start, um, uh, I would like very briefly to, to place things into, into the, co the, the, the context. It is fair to say that education begins with language and you know this very well. Learning language is at the heart uh, of our current policy priorities. One of the objectives set by uh, the European leaders in their vision for a European education area by 2025 was to overcome the remaining barriers linked to the free movement of learners. And one of these barriers is none other than the lack of foreign language skills. So therefore, it is good to underline that there is a joint commitment from the 27 EU member states uh, to make language learning and a real uh, priority. And to this purpose, in uh, May 2019, they adopted a council recommendation on a comprehensive approach to the teaching and learning of languages. But what does it mean concretely, to, to put it in concrete terms? The broad objective is by the end of upper secondary education, every young uh, pupil should be able to fully use the language of schooling. It may seem bizarre, but uh, in a, we live in a, in a Europe where, where the, the diversity in the school classrooms uh, is increasing. Today we have one, uh, one in 10 pupils that at home speak a different language than the language of schooling. Many of you are confronted with this diversity in your daily work. So we need to make sure that every student reaches an excellent level in the language of schooling. And um, we also we, we also noticed that this can be acquired not only by separating the language of schooling with the language, the home languages, but kind of treating them in a continuum so that and valuing the previous acquisition of the of the pupils. And that is why in the council recommendation, there is a, a concept uh, language awareness in school put forward to, to help teacher, school leaders, uh, the wider community dealing with this increased diversity in school. And then, uh, of course, um, the, the, the second main goal is to fully use another European language. This means um, that pupils start um, learning a first foreign language in primary school, and they have up to, up, uh, to, to upper secondary to, to study this, meaning between seven and eight uh, years of learning. So indeed, it needs to, to, to raise the bar for, uh, for uh, this um, um, first foreign language and to yield results, allowing students to, to, to actually use this language in the work on in their study abroad. And then there is a third objective to confidentially use a third language, be it learned uh, in school or elsewhere. Now, how does Erasmus Plus support this? Language learning in the new Erasmus, um, it's, a, it's a key principle. Um, so Erasmus Plus, it's a key instrument, first of all, for achieving the, the European education area by 2025, which I mentioned in the beginning of the presentation. But uh, in the new 
programming period, so which started this year, there is an extra push given to the language uh, learning and teaching. And let me just mention some examples. Of course, first of all, mobility. Mobility is a basis for language learning in general. But since this year on, also pupils in general school education can fully benefit from uh, the Erasmus Plus and go abroad individually or with their class. And of course, this will, with, this will contribute to boosting their language learning. In addition, linguistic support for mobility is to be strengthened either online or other forms. And this touches um, other sectors, not only the school education one. Secondly, um, the, the program will continue funding cooperation projects that focus on language learning. Uh, the comprehensive appro approaches of teaching and learning of languages that are put into um, the council recommendation I mentioned early, uh, I, I have mentioned earlier. It is one of the specific priorities in the field of school education. So projects that address these broad objectives will benefit from funding. Thirdly, uh, the new European school education platform will be, which will be launched next year and which will bring together two known platforms, eTwinning and School Education Gateway. Uh, it is an essential tool at the disposal of teachers and their pupils to bring, to build language learning bridges and uh, to, 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 to cooperate with their classes across Europe. For those of you who do not know this platform yet, uh, the description and the links are avail the, the links are available in the description of this video. Now, allow me one second to put a magnifier glass on the uh, school education gateway. Again, the link to the school education gateway is available in in the description of the video. Uh, because it has a, um, a wealth of um, articles, webinars, MOOCs, and other things related to uh, language learning. Uh, languages, it's language learning. It's one of the themes of the of the platform. Uh, what I'm showing you now, the the different um, articles and webinars, all these are from September uh, this year because in September it is the month when we celebrate languages. So please have a look and and. Um, yeah, get inspired. Many, some of them, you already know them. Now, what else is there for language learning? Very important, the European Language Label Award. This is a well-known recognition tool uh, in place uh, for uh, in place for more than twenty years now. But in the current uh, programming period, we are um, trying to to um, um, strengthen it. Put it in, in concrete terms, it will mean that uh, it will be implemented in all uh, Erasmus Plus program countries. And we hope many more uh, projects will benefit from this award. Uh, you will hear uh, also from Guillaume uh, uh, the, the main, your main contact points for all the things we are uh, presenting now. It's the Erasmus Plus National Agency in your country. All the links are available in the description of the video below. But coming back to the European Language Label Award, um, in 2021 and 2022, um, via this award, projects that work uh, on one of these three priorities that you see in these slides, so language learning and uh, 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 digital media, language learning and promotion of equity, social cohesion, and ex active citizenship, and professional development of language teachers can benefit from uh, these awards. Um, there are other awards supported by the, by the um, Erasmus Plus program, which are complementary to the European language label. I would like to, to um, uh, speak to you very briefly about them. So it's the new uh, the European Innovative Teaching Award initiative that was launched this year to showcase outstanding teaching pra practices and recognize the work of the teachers engaged in Erasmus Plus project. 
the thematic focus this year is distance and blended learning. And I invite you, please follow the, the link in the description of the video, because on the 20th, uh, 20th of October from 10 to 12, there will be the online award ceremony. And another initiative, which some of you know already, it's the e-twinning European prizes. Uh, which honor teachers and students for their work with our e-twinning. In 2021, the thematic focus is media literacy and disinformation. And again, please follow the link in the description of this video to watch the uh, e-twinning European uh, prize ceremony on the 28th, 29th uh, of October. Um, and now I would like to give my, the floor to my colleague Guillaume, which, who will uh, walk you through more details on how to apply for uh, Erasmus Plus uh, funding, and in particular, what, what opportunities are there for uh, you and your school. Thank you, Anna. And hello everyone. So as you understood, my name is Guillaume and I will uh, walk you through uh, some of uh, Erasmus Plus opportunities that are very relevant for you as a pupil, as a teacher or as a school. And um, I will just give you a glimpse of particular actions. And uh, you have to remember that Erasmus Plus is much more than just that. Uh, I will present now my screen. So once again, here it goes. So uh, one thing which is important to remember is that Erasmus Plus program is mostly um, this has mostly a decentralized management. That means that in every country members of the program, there is a national agency in which you can uh, seek advice, get information and apply. So you can find in the description of the video below, all the information and the link to uh, contact your national agency. Uh, there is since 2021, a new Erasmus Plus program, as you heard, and the, one of the most important novelty in this program is the introduction of pupils mobility. This increase the part of school education in the program, but it also make the mobility relevant for all, at, uh, for all stage of uh, education, and uh, which is one of the objective of the European education area. So what does it mean? That means that school at all level of education are, will be able to organize mobility projects for their pupils, and uh, either as individuals or as classes. And pupils, this includes also secondary education students. And we, in addition, it's possible for schools to organize mobility of their teacher and staff. So uh, to support that, there is a stunning 26 billion euro budget and 15% of this budget is uh, dedicated to school education and most of it will go to mobility. So there are plenty of opportunities that are coming with a new program and we invite you very uh, to think very seriously of what you can use and I will present now what is it for you. Um, as a quote of uh, Enrique, a uh, former participant, uh, the quote of Enrique, the former participant, say it all. I mean, Erasmus Plus helps you to become a better version of yourself. So as a pupil, Erasmus, a mobility period abroad can boost your personal growth, your transversal skills and open to new cultures. It allows you to strengthen uh, it's allowed you to strengthen uh, your foreign language skills, either in a new language or in a, or in a language you already master. As a teacher, you can do your professional development abroad, boost your language skills as well, and you can learn new pedagogical approach and as well develop uh, to, uh, cooperation with new colleagues. As a school, you can create more engagement and motivation in your school, introduce new practices and start international cooperation. To be even more concrete, I will show you how, uh, uh, how the details action function. As you can see, uh, Erasmus Plus has a 
a mobility part. And this is the structure of the mobility part. There is an important element in it. You cannot apply as an individual to an Erasmus Plus funding. This is your school, your organization that must apply for you. And when they have the fund, they can fund a mobility of staff or mobility of a pupil or the mobility of a student. And if your school doesn't take part in Erasmus Plus yet, key action one, so that means the action for mobility, there are two ways to join. The first way, which is the most common, would be the accreditation. Your school or an eligible organization, such as a local school authorities, can apply to accreditation to the Erasmus Plus National Agency. The accreditation, it works like a membership card. That means that you um, have first, but you have um, quite, um, sorry. <laughs> At first, you have to invest some time in making the application. But once you are accredited, you have a easier access to funding and regular access to funding from Erasmus+. Plus. If your school is not ready to, uh, because they lack of experience, they feel too small, or because they don't want to have Erasmus+, Plus project every year, there is another kind of access that would be the short-term mobility projects that are, some, uh, that are also possible to do without any accreditation. Uh, finally, I'd like to emphasize that you can also participate in Erasmus Plus indirectly. That's mean by hosting a participant in Erasmus Plus. And that's also an important part of the program because you can receive teachers or pupils uh, from other schools in Europe or join a consortium to be able to participate in Erasmus+. Plus. And this will allow your schools, that will allow your staff and your pupils to fully gain experience with international cooperation and to fully embrace uh, the opportunities offered by the program. Uh, but what you can do once you are accredited or once you have a project, these are the different activities that the Erasmus Plus program um, finance in, uh, in, our, uh, in school education. So pupils can take individual or group mobility period abroad. What does it mean? More precisely, to an individual mobility it's allow a pupil to go abroad to take either a study or in another school or a traineeship from 10 days to one year in one of the organizations that is partner to your school uh, in another European country part of the program. The group mobility of school, of school pupils allows a group of pupils like your class, for instance, from, uh, to go to spend time in another organization uh, located in Europe and stay there during two to 30 days and work together with peers of the hosting school. As a teacher or a staff, you can also participate in different course or job shadowing, or even have teaching assignment in another school, either to learn new techniques, to gain experience with learning mobility yourself, or to strengthen your personal and professional skills. And note that all those activity here they can be organized as blended. That means that you can have a virtual or online cooperation with the hosting organization or the hosting school to have long lasting effects before or after the mobility. And I will not forget once again to remind you that you can gain um, in experience and knowledge by receiving in your school. That's why we also finance possibility for receiving with, uh, with hosting experts or teacher or students studying to be a teacher in your school. This will bring you a lot of knowledge and a lot of things to be inspired as well. There are other ways than just mobility projects in Erasmus+. Plus. You also have the cooperation partnerships. So uh, the cooperation partnerships uh, means projects to exchange best practice and design innovative practice with other organizations abroad. And these activities have already existed in the former program for schools. And we have now uh, introduced an additional and more accessible and specific for grassroots organization, a new format, uh, small scale partnership. I invite you 
to take contact with your national agency to get some more details about how a partnership works and what you can get out of it. I will not mention more than that the online platforms as Oana already get, uh, went through it. But I would like to put some emphasis on a very interesting and new, exciting novelty, which is the Erasmus Teacher Academies. The Erasmus Teacher Academies are uh, a new uh, part of the program Erasmus+. Plus. Uh, as you know, teachers are crucial for uh, education. Without teacher, we have no uh, school. So the Erasmus program has started a new action to support teacher, trainers, educators, and the school leaders to promote their continuous professional development and strengthen the initial teacher education. This is a teacher academies. And these academies would be network of teacher education institution that will work on common European issues such as inclusion, multicultural classroom, gender equality, sustainable environment, or digital learning. And they will, among other, provide teachers with new learning opportunities, such as courses, modules, or summer schools. The first academies will be soon revealed, and I invite you to, uh, follow, about, uh, to follow it and be aware of their activities. It might be a lot of oppor new opportunities for you. To finish, I uh, would like to um, remind you that the, hopefully the pandemic is the COVID-19 pandemic is fading away and there are a lot of deadlines for Erasmus Plus that are approaching. So this is a perfect timing for preparing yourself for application and projects and learning about Erasmus Plus. So I will remind you some of the most important dates. Uh, on the 19th of October 2021, there is an, an accreditation application deadline. And also below the video in the description, you can find a link to a brochure who explain you more about this accreditation. Afterward, we will have in November the publication of the Erasmus Plus program guides, where you will find more details about all the opportunities that the Erasmus Plus program uh, provide and what are the real conditions. And finally, I remind you that in the, the winter, spring 2022, you will have uh, the deadlines for most of the mobility project and uh, partnership projects. So be ready and contact your national agency. And remember, once again, all the link for information are below this video and uh, use it grip the chance and uh, see you in Erasmus Plus. So now I will leave the floor to uh, Zidri. That will... Uh, thank you, Guillaume. First of all, I would like to thank you, to thank also Daphne, Oana for sharing information about uh, your projects. And uh, I would like to thank everyone who watched our online event. And uh, I hope that you will that you found something that would help you to enhance your language learning and to, to launch you into one or other project. It is quite straightforward with Juvenas Translatores. The deadline for applications is 20th of October and also Discover EU, the deadline 26th of October. It is much more complex for Erasmus+, Plus, which is huge a lot of opportunities, and it's very much country by country. So really, as Oana and Guillaume already stressed it out, please go to national agencies, talk to people there. They will definitely tell you a lot of things that you can do and enjoy it. So thank you all again for watching. And together with Oana, Daphne, and Guillaume, we are looking very much forward to see you among participants of this project that we just talked about. So thank you for your attention and goodbye.